I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic is pride energy. And on today's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, we're going to discuss not allowing pride to stand in our way. Pride is a very odd energy. It is both good and bad, depending upon one's perspective and programming. It can be used as motivation, but also has the ability to completely sabotage our efforts. On the one hand, we can feel pride in our achievements after working so long on something. This can give us motivation to keep working on ourselves, to feel good that so much of what we've worked on we have been successful with. But the flip side of this energy is that we can also be boastful or vain or feeling self-satisfied arrogant, opinionated, and close-minded, which will eventually undermine us. Like fear, pride is one of those energies most susceptible to programming. When we were young children, we were taught to take pride in our work, which created the tribal work ethic. Because we were very easily manipulated to believe things about ourselves and the world around us, the programming around pride was easily reinforced through rewards and punishments. Anything successful we achieved that fit in with our tribal idea of accomplishment was rewarded with validation for it. If we did not live up to the expectations set forth for us, we were dismissed or admonished. So every accomplishment gave us a sense of pride. But there is so much to pride that we don't stop to consider its real meaning or grasp the understanding of what pride means to each of us. And because we all have a unique perspective, we all view pride in different ways and at different points in our life as we grow older. Yes, pride is an odd energy. Someone can compliment us on our appearance, telling us we're handsome, pretty, beautiful, good-looking, and we can feel proud of how we look. Yet, we really had nothing to do with our face, hair, or eye color we were born with, It was something we only possess because of our genetic makeup, something we got from our parents. Conversely, we could have been overweight most of our life, but then we changed our diet, we worked out, exercised hard to lose weight and become fit. But perhaps because no one notices, or if they do, they don't say anything, or make any comments that they have noticed how hard we must have worked at it to achieve this new look about ourselves, our pride in ourself can take a hit. Without the external validation, our pride suffers for it and we can feel hurt or even rejected, which of course makes the ego create all kinds of stories around it. Because we've been programmed to take pride in our achievements, we can get easily sucked into doing things for the accolades, even though they may not even be something we ourselves wanted to achieve. We may have been on the honor roll in high school or college, but we only sought the good grades to get recognized for them, not because they really mattered to us. We do all kinds of things with our life that are tied to pride, even when it isn't something we may not have otherwise chosen to pursue. This can lead to things like choosing careers that give us a false sense of pride, even though the jobs or careers themselves are unfulfilling to us. This is like having a hollow and meaningless sense of pride. 
But when we found our purpose and we work very hard to achieve things that matter to us, we can feel pride. We feel a sense of ownership that we did something that mattered, yet we also seek some validation for it. We always want some kind of recognition for things we do well or work hard at, and especially because we've been programmed to seek out this validation or reward. If we receive nothing, we can feel let down as if it didn't really matter after all. And this is directly tied to the pride energy. We've come to expect recognition and validation. It feeds our pride. And so we, when we don't get it, we end up feeling hurt. Or worse, we can allow our ego to make up stories telling us we're not good enough, not worthy of it, and so on. To the point we start believing it. And then out of pride, we will give up. Another aspect to pride is getting so caught up in a past achievement that we can't let it go. Something we accomplished so long ago, but we keep reliving it, retelling the story over and over again because we need the validation it gave us. But nothing in our current life compares to that feeling. So instead of working on something new and valuable, we remain stuck in the past. A typical example is the superstar athlete from high school or college who never went on to becoming a pro athlete but needs that feeling of pride to escape the doldrums of the life he has now that is nowhere near as exciting or fulfilling. This kind of pride can keep us very stuck in our present day to day grind of an unfulfilling life and prevent us from ever letting go of it and moving on and actually doing something worthwhile with our life now. Often, when we really want to do something to improve our lives, pride can get in the way of achieving it because pride can prevent us from seeking help. Even if the help we could get might change our life forever, we can be so stubbornly prideful and feel like we can do it all on our own so we never ask others for help. Pride is then a form of resistance. It is a refusal to recognize that we can't do some of these things on our own. But when it comes to all of the major accomplishments of our life, whether they are something we've already accomplished or something we hope to achieve, most every single one of them required someone helping us along the way, whether we're willing to admit it or not. Pride can prevent us from admitting we needed the help, or it can prevent us from asking. But the truth is, every major accomplishment any individual makes required others' assistance, and pride can get in the way of this. We can be so full of pride that we fail to realize that the successful company we built was due to those we hired or allowed to help us create it, or the goods or services we sold to accomplish it, or even the customers or clients themselves who help provide the success we may now enjoy. No one accomplishes much of anything without the assistance of others, yet pride will not allow us to ask for help or even acknowledge the help we may have received, once again leaving us to believe we did it entirely on our own. Nobody ever achieves anything on their own, unless they live alone on a deserted island. Make no mistake, there is not something inherently wrong with pride itself. Like every other energy, it is a matter of how we use this energy. We can certainly take ownership of something we were successful at and proclaim that we did it, and take some pride in doing so. And we should take some time and bask in the glow of our efforts paying off. 
This is one area where pride is useful. It helps promote self-esteem, self-worth, and self-love. This kind of pride can give us strength when we thought we had none, courage and motivation to continue on, and it can bring us happiness and joy. But the key is not getting stuck in this emotion because of its temporary nature. Enjoy the experience for what it is and be proud of yourself. But then, like all things we experience, we must learn to let it go and move on to the next thing. It's all just part of the process. We can even take pride in failing, just knowing we are working towards something bigger and feeling proud that setbacks in life are not going to keep us down. In this way, pride in our efforts can give us momentum. But if we're not careful, we can wallow in pride just as much as we can in pity, and either can hold us back if we're not aware. But that is what's so odd about pride. It can be both, a step up as well as a stumbling block. It's up to us to recognize it in each and every moment. This takes awareness. Awareness of who has conscious mind control in the moment we feel pride. If it is our true self, it can lead to bigger and better things. If it's our ego that has control, it can be a major block to our goals. It's when the ego has control that we are boastful or vain, where everything is about ourself and what we have done, forgetting how much others have helped us achieve something, or leave us feeling arrogant, like we're better than others. The ego loves using pride to give a feeling of self-satisfaction, which can lead to laziness and unmotivated to do anything else. When pride is controlled by the ego, we can be opinionated and close-minded where we think we are right and everyone who disagrees with us is wrong, and then we waste our time attacking and defending out of pride. The proverbial saying, pride comes before a fall, is a warning about pride making us feel arrogant and better than others and to watch out because life has a way of bringing us back down to earth and humbling us. Now the actual quote is from the Bible in the book of Proverbs that says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We know all too well how life can give us even the most successful in the world a big kick in the teeth when we are feeling invincible. We need to learn balance so that when we do something we feel pride in, we can accept that we can enjoy the success we have in this moment only, but know that this moment is fleeting and things can change. If we can accept it as a temporary emotion of the moment and just appreciate the experience with gratitude without having any expectations beyond that, pride need not become a problem. Of course, pride as a feeling or emotion is not the same as the energy of it. But because we are energy itself, we can use the energy of pride to our advantage to move out of it and into higher energy states. With awareness, we can move out of pride into confidence with the strength of knowing we can do anything. There is sometimes a fine line between the energy of pride and courage where we can drift back and forth between the two if we aren't aware. Life is going to walk up to you slap you in the face and say, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Now some are going to say, are you just going to stand there and take this? Fight back. While others are going to say, let it go and walk away. It's always a choice. 
Now, if we're living in the pride energy, our ego will convince us to fight back. It's how it's been programmed to be. It's going to judge and create stories about the situation, making us more emotional and cause us to react emotionally and fight with life. That is the ego's default way of dealing with life. However, the real being we are, our spiritual nature that lives from the heart, will not judge this situation as being neither good nor bad. It's just another experience like all the others we've had throughout our life. It will drop the pride and allow us to be peaceful and calmly respond to our experience. There will be cases where it is necessary to fight back, but taking the emotion and story out of the experience will allow us to see the experience for what it is, and we can then make the choice that it's the correct one for any given situation. Typically, letting it go and walking away takes all the power and energy of the situation away and restores the power back to us. The choice is ours, and it is always a matter of doing what serves our purpose. It takes more courage to let go than it does to fight back. Don't allow pride to stand in your way. Well, that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay tuned.